I probably receive two to three emails a week asking what board someone can use to learn FPGAs. Well, the guys at Gadget Factory sent me this Papilio One, which is uh, means butterfly in some language, which I don't know off the top of my head. And I kind of like it. It's pretty cool. It's uh, very minimalistic, which is great for a beginner board. It has virtually no peripherals integrated, which is good because you don't have to worry about constraining these different peripherals. It has connectors so you can hook up these things they call wings, since it's a butterfly, so you can put this is a PS2 keyboard mouse connector, there's some buffers, there's this is an analog to digital converter board that I modified a little bit, but that's um, one of the boards that they offer. They have a VGA out. I built my own VGA so I could have a few more colors. That's what's up here on this monitor. All kinds of different stuff audio out. The built-in download cable is convenient because uh, you don't have to use the Xilinx cable, although it's not, as far as I know, not compatible with the Xilinx software directly, but it comes with this handy little script file, which works out pretty well. So if we go over here, you just associate the Xilinx bit file with this this batch file that it comes uh, with the board. When you double click, it just automatically starts downloading through this um, FTDI RS2322322 whatever chip that's on there. And uh, voila, it programs. It also has a configuration device on there so you can have it automatically boot up for a configuration. And you Ardu Arduino folks will love that you can download a bit file to it and run Arduino code. So happy, happy um, Arduino folks. So I think it's it's somewhere between 30 and $80 depending on what density little Spartan 3 part that it uh, that you choose. Um, great. Um, if, if you want to get started with FPGAs, get this one, hook an LED up to it, and get that LED blinking right away. Oh, um, for some other details that I know about it, it has a 32 megahertz clock on it, which is convenient. It has some jumpers on there for changing the I.O from 3.3, 2.5, and looks like 1.2 volts, which is convenient. I haven't actually checked the, the Spartan part to see if it's 5 volt tolerant. I'm assuming not since they're selling this this buffer here. On the wings connectors, there there is uh, several voltages that you can choose from. I believe 5 volts is out there too. Yeah, looks like it's got 5 volts out there and 3.3 at least. So, go grab one of these. Oh, it also has a standalone power connector here, or it can be connected through USB and powered. Alright, I'm done rambling about this thing. Bye.